So when it was decided that Jesus was going to be crucified, he began the long journey to the place where he was going to be executed. Now, at this point, Jesus had been really badly beaten. He was exhausted near the point of death. And it, he was going to have to carry his own cross up to his execution, which it would have been a lot bigger than these crosses. It would have been solid wood, so it would have been super heavy. And Jesus could barely even stand up, let alone carry this cross through a city. And seeing this, the Roman soldiers grabbed a man from the crowd named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross with Jesus up to the place where he was going to be executed. Now, the place that they were headed was called Golgotha, which means in Aramaic, the place of the skull. And they chose this place on purpose because it was on a hillside right next to a public road. And so a lot of people were going to be walking by. A lot of people were going to be able to see Jesus hanging from the cross. And so they get to Golgotha and they lay the cross down. They put Jesus on top of it. And then they take these long nails and they drive them through Jesus's hands and feet. And they raise the cross up so that Jesus is hanging by the nails, barely even able to breathe from the way that his arms are positioned. And above his head, they put the sign that says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. See, everything that they did was just to shame Jesus. It was to let his followers know that whatever Jesus's mission was, he had failed. Now, Jesus has kind of an interesting interaction while he's up there on the cross. There's two criminals that are also being crucified that day. And one of the criminals looks over at Jesus and he starts to say, hey, I thought you were the Messiah. If you're the Messiah, why don't you get down off this cross and save yourself? In fact, while you're at it, save us too. But the other criminal looks at him, tells him to stop, and he looks at Jesus and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom today. And Jesus looks at the man and he says, surely today you'll be with me in paradise. And the Bible says that around noon, the sky started to get dark and there was no light at all coming from the sun. And then around three o'clock, Jesus looks up at heaven, looks up at the sky, and he shouts, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. And the Bible says right after he yells that, he takes his last breath. And at the moment of Jesus' death, the ground begins to shake, and the thick curtain that was in the Jewish temple, which separated the Holy of Holies, where God's presence was from the rest of the temple, was torn in half. Now, all the people that had come to see Jesus get crucified that day, when they saw all this stuff start to happen, they realized what they had done. Even the Roman officer that was overseeing the execution, when he saw all this start to happen, started to worship God, realizing that Jesus was, in fact, the Son of God and that he had just killed him. Now, I know that this is a, a, a bleak and heavy moment in the story of Easter, but have you ever wondered why the cross is the symbol of Christianity? Why our symbol of hope is an ancient method of, of torture and execution. It's a little bit weird, right? When you see people wearing a cross necklace, if you think about it, it would almost be like wearing a necklace that has like an electric chair. It's kind of strange, but here's why. The reason why the cross is the symbol of our hope is because the cross represents a moment. The moment that your sin and my sin was paid for. The moment that you and I became free people, free to have a relationship with Jesus, free, to, free from shame and guilt and death, free to live the best life ever with Jesus. And so even though I know that Good Friday today, I know that this part in the Easter story is a little bit heavy, here's what I want you to remember. Here's what I wanna remind you of today. When you look at the cross, I want you to remember that Jesus died on that cross. He hung on that cross for you. And even if it was just for you, he still would have done it. Rode into the city of Jerusalem, he actually began to weep. He grieved because Jesus knew the hearts of the people. The same crowd that was praising him, that crowd was about to turn on him. 